This is uh, January 2nd, 2015. Happy New Year. Uh, Edible Acres here with another biochar thing. Um, covered a whole lot the cone pit method that I was working with. I made another little video after my first trial, or one of my first trials with this barrel idea. Existing barrel. Um, this is more like an 80 gallon as opposed to a standard 55. So this is cut and like this when we got here is our rainwater collection for a little while and uh, seems like it serves better purpose as a kiln for making charcoal and last time I ran it ran beautifully filled right to the brim with finished char rolled it over quenched it fed it into my compost here this is my potting mix for next year it's got a ton of charcoal in it now you probably can't even see but anyway what I'm interested in documenting now is the first time I'm going to try this is um, basically a really lightweight and scalable kiln so it mimics to some extent the idea of you know this hollowed out cylindrical thing that would allow the smoke and the heat to kind of roll back on itself but this being scrap sheet metal roofing so this was a two foot wide by maybe 12 foot long piece of scrap sheet metal uh, that came off of a roof it has holes all throughout it so it's not ideal for roofing and I cut it to a bunch of 30 inch sections and just use roofing screws boom 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 so there's three screws at each of the panels and then you can see that it's just that's the end there and then it loops around and then it comes in on itself and the ends here hammered in some T-stakes with a little post pounder and the idea is that I could then so this is almost maybe double the overall volume of that space and that's already pretty significant and depending on the type of material I'm feeding so I've got a bunch of material that I brought out of the woods that's going to go today and believe it or not I'll fly through this easily in like four to six hours this afternoon this is just old wood laying around in the woods I've just been hauling it forward 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 and I stomped on it a little bit ran a chainsaw through it but basically this will easily eat all that material and let's say I was out in the woods um, you know transporting this would be absolutely trivial you just spin it into a really really tight spiral throw a bungee cord around it or tie it off with rope you got this nice dense piece of metal it's probably 25 30 pounds as opposed to that which I can barely lift and it's static in its shape and then you pound in a couple tea stakes depending on the size of the retort you want to have and then quench it when you're done be able to pull the sheet metal apart and have all the charcoal dump out by doing it on this shaved soil right next to my compost it's going to be really easy to fold it into my potting mix so basically I'll be replacing the perlite constituent of my potting mix with charcoal from here on so I'm going to get to it I'm going to run this session today and then I will document what it all looks like tomorrow so crossing my fingers that this works well because it's lightweight it's super reproducible uh, it's scalable and it just seems like a, a potentially really smart way to be very mobile with this process it took me about five minutes to set this up out here so that's that I'm gonna get to it and check in I guess tomorrow in the morning once it's all done Thanks for watching. Got the two kilns running here. The one on the left is the open barrel. The one on the right is that mox hen or just kind of like vertical chimney system. This one looks like it's running punky. It's just at the moment it is. It for the most part this one was running the best overall through the evening. Right now it's just heavily loaded with a bunch of wet sumac and all sorts of other stuff, so it's kind of catching up to itself. And interestingly, as this one catches up, that one gets a little bit punkier. So there's a real art to how you feed these. You know, if they're getting smoky, you lay off and you let them catch up. Um, and I've been using sticks to poke in the bottom and really crush those coals, release the sin gases and get them caught up. Um, so you can see now two side by side. I would say equal performance. I'm happy with both. Um, halfway through the burn right now, so we'll keep going. Got some fantasies around, you know, three or four of these tea stakes hammered in. Could there be another, if they came together a bit, could there be another 
cylinder of sheet metal roofing that slips over that to create a really intense chimney effect. I wonder. But there you go, Syngas is getting caught on that one. Barrels are super promising. Uh, and this sheet metal modified thing with T-Stakes, super promising. Scalable, lightweight. I don't see why I couldn't do 300 gallons per container. And so it's the following morning here. I gave the intro a little ways ago. Um, last night or yesterday afternoon into last night ran that kiln there and then that's the new kiln that I'm experimenting with which I just love how much it just collapses down. I mean, it's smaller than a 55 gallon drum and I didn't roll it that tight. Um, it could probably fit in a 55 gallon drum easily and it could expand out to do like 300 gallons um, and this thing performed beautifully like way beyond what I would have expected. Um, so really promising there. Here's the charcoal. Maybe it's a little hard to get a sense of how much is actually there, but you can see, you can, here it feels like I'm walking on lava flow. That's how deep it is, so the shovel depth, well, half shovel depth, right, of charcoal and all this area. So I don't know, I don't, I didn't really measure that container and this container. I'm going to guess it's 150, 200 gallons, somewhere in that ballpark um, in one session. Left a little bit of a mess, kind of called it at around 8 o'clock. I was kind of done adding more. So I've got this, but that's fine. I'll use it for another, to start another session. Um, so from here, it feels like I'm really excited to make another one of these, maybe even a little bit taller. Uh, that one's cut at 30 inches long, and there's five segments of this old roof metal. And you can see it's got holes and stuff like that. I think I got this for a couple of bucks. It's actually much, much cheaper than a 55 gallon drum. These are like 13 to 16 bucks around here. These are sturdier, so maybe these would last longer. I don't know. That remains to be seen. Um, but, you know, 36 inches tall seems still really manageable. Much taller than that, and it's going to be hard to feed into it and see the fire. So I'd prefer to keep it on three feet or lower. Uh, the three tea stakes worked out beautifully with a steak pounder. And then they wiggled out. At the end, I put on welder's gloves and wiggled them out of the ground and then unfurled that metal roofing, pulled it away, and that allowed me to go in with the hay fork, spread all the hot charcoal out, and pull the brands with the hay fork before I started quenching, which I would say reduced the amount of water that I needed to quench by maybe a factor of three or four. Uh, really, really efficient in water usage when you can like dump out your charcoal. Same with this, when it was done, uh, I, you know, I put a boot on it and rolled it forward into here, it dumped all its contents out, rolled it away, and then was able to open up all that charcoal, add water to quench it, and then you can really clearly see where the pockets are that you haven't hit. And by scraping all the topsoil away, First, as I was going through and quenching, and pockets were getting cooled off, I was able to go through, I feel like I'm a chicken in here. <laughs> but now I'm getting, I mean, it's already like borderline perfectly pulverized. You can see down below is the actual soil. Um, so yeah, from here, bring in, I can start bringing in truckloads of compost, manures, things like that, put them into a wheelbarrow, off the truck mixed with this charcoal and then go out and mulch the woods, mulch all these areas where I'm going to do future gardening and have that going. So real promising new development, very low tech, incredibly reproducible. You know, three, let's say three to five tea stakes. Um, this was a 12 foot sheet of roof metal, but I don't see why an eight foot sheet couldn't be figured out how to work with. There's five segments. Maybe it would work with three or four, I don't know. Um, the one key thing if you're going to do this, it seems like it really matters that the tea stakes are pounded in enough and the metal is pushed against them enough that you can be a little rough with it while you're feeding it. Because, you know, as you go, you tend to kind of throw sticks at it, that kind of thing, or poke at it. I think if it was just barely in there with the tea stakes, it would have fallen apart and that would have been maybe not disastrous, but pretty, pretty rough. So, 
my fingers are freezing cold. It's time to do some other stuff, but there's the next step in the evolution of farm scale biochar. I'm, I'm going to set a goal for myself of seeing if I can render a thousand gallons of charcoal in one session sometime this winter. That's a new statement as of this moment. I just thought that, <laughs> seeing how much charcoal is here, um, and see how scalable this is by ke and still keeping it well within the price of like next to nothing and very very low embodied energy to get us there so used sheet metal roofing used t square t stakes i wouldn't buy new stuff for any of this and now i'm starting to shake because it's cold so i'm done thanks for watching